What's going on guys? Welcome to Driven Productions. My name's Adam. We are taking it old school today. We've got an incredible Laguna Seca Blue E46 M3 and we've got the incredible E36 M3 from 1999 and 2004. Brian, roll that front montage and let's get into this one. particular vehicle has 147,000 miles on it but I gotta say it is such a fun car to drive very visceral red lines at almost 8,000 rpms you know it's more than the sum of its parts right it's all about the way it makes you feel I love the hydraulic steering I love the seat it's comfortable I love that it's very spacious in here you have a great view of everything and it is, it is fun to drive. It just has that old school nature, you know, BMW, I think really fired on all cylinders back in the uh, 2000 years. I think that's when they made their best cars. I think they're in a lot of ways better than they are even today. Nothing wrong with the newer BMWs, of course, other than the way they look in my opinion, but this, uh, this has still got a lot of what you're looking for, a lot of X factor, you know, as far as the way it feels and the way it shifts and just the overall fun factor, you know? All right, guys, we're in the E36 M3 here. Just giving it out a little bit of a, a little bit of a jaunt. Check this out. So this is full throttle. Feels great. Not the most powerful car in the world, but you know, it's not always in the statistics that make these things special, right? Coming out of that turn, full throttle, cars running out, a little bit of torque. It just feels nice. It's fun to drive, sounds good. It's just got a lot of that X factor that you're looking for when it comes to a performance car, a weekend warrior. And uh, really guys, I hope you enjoy uh, our thoughts on both of these cars. I'm just gonna start off this video by saying I think these are some of the best looking cars man has ever produced. I am a Bavarian Motor Works fan, boy. I've drove, driven an M6. I'll put a link to a video that we did recently. You guys enjoyed that one. Last I looked, it was over 60,000 views. But this right here is one of the best looking M cars they've ever produced in my personal opinion. Now, I absolutely love the E36, but the E46 here is just perfection. You have this little haunch here, right? To, which helps with the air intake fitment. You have these slightly larger body panels here on both the front and the rear, which is exclusive to the E46, by, mind you. And you also have this little side diffuser here, which kind of set off a whole trend in the industry. Now, elephant in the room, these are not the original wheels here. We're talking about 19 CSL wheels, I believe. But otherwise, this is pretty much a stock car from the exterior. The only thing to note is the owner, Dan, who I'm gonna bring on here in just a minute, these right here are blacked out. So he blacked out this, he blacked out the kidney grills up front. Let me just talk a second about the kidney grills, guys. Guys, these are the proportions that should be on a BMW to this day. And the new ones have these incredibly, I, I don't know, they're just, they're not necessarily ugly. I know they let a lot of airflow in, but they're kind of ostentatious. Like they're just over the, over the top, right? They go from this top all the way to the bottom. It's very aggressive. This still has that classic, if you didn't know it's a performance car, you wouldn't know. And I love that. It's, it's stately, it's understated, right? There's a lot of positives with both of these cars as far as the way they look. And I think that's really helping their collectability. Now, this one right here, 
This is obviously not a stock car. It's been lowered. You've got some wheels. So I'm going to want to bring Dan on in a little bit and he could talk about the story of this particular car. Fun fact, this is actually, the, he is the original owner. And this is the car that he met his wife in and then first date and the whole nine. They all enjoyed this car until they sold it to get a house and do something practical with the money, of course. However, I got to say, you know, he was able to buy it back recently out of a California. It's kind of one of those fun stories. He regretted selling it and then he found it again. And I, I love stories like Not that. Not that much power, guys. This has a 3.2 liter engine, making about 240 horsepower. With the tune, Dan thinks is pushing about 250, 255. This right here has the S54 engine. The S54 engine is a pretty incredible power plant. It was engine of the year for many, many years. And uh, I gotta say, power-wise, it doesn't feel amazing today. However, it's not necessarily in the performance figures, it's in the feeling of it, right? It's got a lot of soul. So this red line's around 8,000 RPMs. And we're talking still about 333 horsepower and 260 foot-pounds of torque, zero to 60 in the high fours. So not exactly a fast car, but just a great feeling, the way it shifts, just the analog feeling with the hydraulic steering and everything. There's so many things about this car that are awesome. Right, before I bring Dan in, guys, if you're not familiar with the E46 and whatnot, they came out with this car in 2000 to 2006, and they came out with the E36 in 1995, and they did it to about 1999, right? Maybe 2000, you might have been able to get one, but those are about the run years. So I'm gonna bring in Dan now and uh, just ask him some general questions. Hopefully you guys enjoy his take. He is the owner. Yeah, Dan? Nice to meet you. Man, thanks so much for being uh, on camera, letting us put these incredible machines uh, for the folks. Yeah. So how do you sum up the love for these cars you know what, what is your take on it uh, if I'm just a elevator pitch on it well for us growing up in the 90s that's a big push right there right yeah um, you know old Gran Turismo yeah can I just say need for speed most wanted yep. need for speed most wanted the that's E46 the was on the cover I love this car I, I can't even tell you how many times I played this car in that game yeah and Paul Walker's love for the E36 the lightweights he, one of the best bodies he's ever seen on a car he had so, like five of them, didn't he? He had five of them, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, when he passed, hit, hit the whole world here. It, um, all of them went, and uh, they went to good homes, which was a good thing. Yeah, it's right? probably more of a charity thing, I assume. But It was, yes, yeah. but good homes, yeah. So how do you sum them up, though? What do you think? Well, I think the body lines, I just having kind of the flatter lines versus the bubbly lines of the newer cars. Yeah. Um, I think aerodynamics was an important part, but I think simplicity with BMW was really important as well. 100%. Yeah, so... I and mean, they look so good. They've aged. I, name a car that's aged better than this. It's hard to Guys, say. Guys, go in the comments. What's a car that's aged better than an E46 M3? I'm waiting. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, e, S2000, uh, you know? I don't think there's a better one. The RX-7, maybe? Okay, yeah, maybe. I give you the RX-7. It's up there, but the engine's not nearly no. as cool and collectible as these, right? No. They're money pits. I mean, they made a lot of these cars, but at the same time, there's such a value for them because there was a time when the value dipped, when you can talk about that later maybe, and then yeah. it went up again, and now people are respecting them a lot more. Well, let's talk about the value. So these were, you could have got a decent, what, 75, 80,000 mile M6, E46 specifically for 20,000 before COVID? The M3, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and what are they at now? For um, well, 75,000 mile one. M3s under 100,000 miles, you're looking at 25,000, maybe so, up to 30. So they've they've gone at about yeah. 20%. Laguna Seca, you get a it's about a uh, $10,000 tax on that. Okay. Depends on what state you're in. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, these are these hold a lot better value because they only made about a thousand of them. Okay, so. so this is probably sitting here today. I mean, this has a lot of miles on it. Ble guys, believe it or not, we're gonna take this for a drive. This is 140 plus thousand miles yeah. on this car. Yeah. Unbelievable. You'd never know it looking at it. The engine runs great, the AC blows cold. I mean, it's just incredible, you know? Hey, but Adam, don't worry about the miles though, because these cars, it's all about maintenance. You can get a car with 50,000 miles on it and pay it too, too much money, but if there's no maintenance done on it or poor maintenance, you're spending about 10 to 15,000 on it right off the bat. Yeah, what are some of the big maintenance issues that these cars experience um, for somebody the, watching? So the big three you gotta watch out for, they okay. call it the big three on the E46, is the um, rod bearings. Rod bearings, okay. And then you have your, so let's see here. So the rod bearings are the big one because that's one of the most costly ones. The subframe, the subframe on these, this, and the E92s have issues. Yeah, I heard they something about the, the, the crack. suspension, right? Yes, and then the Vanos system, which double Vanos, single Vanos. So the Vanos system has problems. So if you get those three done, if you want to look for an E46, the best thing to do is look for one that has the big three done. 
They probably, if you had to do it yourself, it'd probably be about five to six thousand dollars to have some shop do it for you. It's an engine out, isn't it? Um, no, not not on the Vanos. Oh, no, good. No, the Vanos you can do it without the engine out. Um, but the subframe is a you know you want to do it right. Don't don't take what BMW says about the glue. That doesn't work. Get the get the kits. That's the way to go. Has this car had that all done? Yeah. So the subframe's done. The Vanos is done. Unfortunately, the rod bearings have not been done, which is a miracle. This car has this many miles and it hasn't gone yet. Huh. Sometimes the rod bearings can go every 30, 40,000 miles on it. It just depends on the Is there the telltale the signs letting you know? So um, you, can hear, you can hear a little bit of knocking. Okay. I'm not an expert, but um, I would suggest a Blackstone Lab oil analysis for 25 bucks sent to those guys. They'll give you a little report in two weeks. No kidding. It's a blood test on an oil change. So it gives <laughs> you over 100 different metrics on over thousands of cars. Wow. With that engine. So I recommend that if you if you want to do that. I haven't done it yet. I'm planning to do it. Okay. That'll tell me if I should be worried or not. Right. If I have some copper in there, I should be worried. Got it. So. Interesting. Just the grading of the actual piston itself, huh? <sighs> yep. So. Yeah, but definitely for the collectability guys, get the six speed. Now, this car, this is a different story entirely, right? You bought this new, is that right? Yeah, it kind of dates me a little bit of my age, I guess. But uh, yeah, I bought it. We're both old. Well, yeah. And I was crazy as a 20-something year old buying a I guess adjusted for inflation, maybe a sixty-five thousand dollar car. Yeah, no, you you, yeah. you were you were rolling deep back then, my man. I mean, rolling deep in debt, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this car was purchased off the showroom floor in, in uh, Santa Clara, California, inside okay. the dealership. It was one, it was the last E thirty six M three they were selling outside of. There was a yellow one right next to it that was convertible. Nice. So the Dakar um, yellow one. Was that? Is it Dakar yes, yellow? I think it was Dakar yellow. Yeah. yeah. So now they're very popular. The yeah. yellow ones. And they right? just got a Dakar yellow M6. And we featured it. I bought this car. I bought it quick because there was someone else interested in it. And um, yeah, I felt like a king for a while driving it. I bet you did. And, but I was not. I wasn't rich like a king though. Right. <laughs> yeah. That, that that was a hefty payment every so, month. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you 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 and your wife, I hear, enjoyed this car. Uh, this led to you guys getting yeah, married. Yeah. Yeah. I brought this car when I was I was going to local college. I brought, I parked the car in the lot and um, yeah, I met my wife in school and she put a note on the car one day and the rest is history. We went on our first date to Carmel. It was a nice, nice date guys. If you ever want to take a, a lady or a girl on a date and, and you can't go anywhere, take them on a two hour drive somewhere. <laughs> I love and it. So she got to go on a two hour cruise to Carmel yeah. with me and we had a great time. We, we have pictures of us taking off in our, in our wedding in it. And unfortunately, as we all know, as we get, when we get responsible and we want sure. to buy a house sure. and the yeah. BMW Bank guys, goes, oh, you got this debt it's, payment. It's out of warranty, right? Yeah. And yeah. then the guy's like, oh, it's $2,000, do this, that, and this. And I'm like, okay, I need to sell it. Regretted it. And there is a story that goes along with that as well. Yeah, so how the heck did you end up back with this car after so many years? I mean, this so car is it was kind of, years it was, it was kind of a miracle. The story is, about eight or nine years ago, I um, I was on a BMW forum and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna put the, I really want my car back someday. I wanna know where it is. Is it yeah. in California? I put the VIN number and my phone number and my email on there. And then I forgot about it. And like many years later, someone responds to me and basically says, I have your car. And I'm about, you know, he was probably about 20 miles away. Wow. So um, at the time, at the time, and it was in my spam mobile thing. So I found it in my spam email. So that was a miracle in itself as well. Sure. Fast forward. That was years ago though, yeah, right? Yeah, years ago. So fast forward a little bit longer, I kind of great relationship with the guy, you know, just cool guy, cool car guy. Became friends. Yeah, became friends and um, saw the car a couple times. And then I said, if you ever sell it, you know, this story I want, goes, I want first, I want crack, first at crack at it. it. Yeah. So the funny thing was though, he didn't want it and I don't blame him, right? I don't blame him. And I think to this day he regrets it, but <laughs> he's a cool guy and he, he worked on the car himself. He took care of the car. So what led him to sell it guys, same thing kind of what happened with me, you know, the lady on the other side, right? Right. So he, him, I was looking for LSB for him and I found a 2000, I think it was 2001. He picked it up and now he had a problem like we most most of us have is space, right? Of course. So in downtown San garage. Jose, yeah, downtown Three San cars. Jose he doesn't have that space, right? Yeah. So uh, we talked about it and he's like, yeah, I got it, it has to go. So uh, very gracious, gave me a great price. Great guy, said we're gonna stay in touch, you know, probably watch this video. Absolutely. And um, surprised my wife. And I think she was, I played like the wedding music and all that no, kind of fun. Didn't. Dude, I had to do it. Because <laughs> she's like that, right? So these are like notes, take the, take the notes, right? So she came in and I thought she was going to be super excited. She was not. And because 
she lost her parking spot. So, oh. so now we're looking into a lift. A lift, yeah. yeah. So, hey, happy wife, happy life, guys. I want to get her car back in there, but I got her an X5, so she's she. We're we're BMW'd out right now. You are. Yeah, You're break my BMW wallet or whatever else acronym it goes. Break with my wallet. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh, very cool. Hey, Dan, tell us a little bit about the interior of the uh, E46 here. What do you love about it? Yeah, it's it's what I love about it most, Adam, is uh, that it's analog. It's it just BMW gives you. It's not too many buttons. Not just just perfect and you have this adjuster here if you want to get a, a quick burst of heat you can go this way or go straight to the cold function right there you got this original nav system which a lot of the cars didn't have it was a pretty big upgrade back then um, I obviously don't use it right now you got to upgrade it through BMW CD system but what's really cool is it has a hidden little uh, CD slot right there you can go like that a lot of these pixelate and there's some companies I think there's one company in Texas one company in California that will actually take you take it out send it to them in a week They'll send it back and they'll fix all the pixelation for you for I think a couple hundred bucks Cool. Um, AC is dual you know, dual climate you got the little buttons You know the BMW is known for the sport button So you push that sport button it gives a little quicker response time on the pedal feels like you're driving an extra 50 horsepower heated seats they, they love these other buttons too which is basically like you know boosting up the sound making it look, sound a little better and then obviously you know if you want to turn off stability control and um, adjust some other functions and another neat thing is BMW did not like America when it came to cup holders they hated cup holders so on the E36 E46 they modified this area to, to, to uh, support uh, United States and American needs for cup holders. So you can actually pop this out and something else went in there on the European models. It was an ad, I think a smoker or cup holder ad. You'll see that on the E36 too. This also lights up, which is cool at night. It'll glow the, the traditional BMW red. Um, one thing to point out, a lot of these cars, the, um, the mirror, rear mirror starts to bleed. So there's a company again that will replace that, that will repair that for about 150 bucks. The gauges in this car are pretty neat. Um, so you'll see a little bit of a light shining right now it goes from orange to red that'll change color to green yellow um, it's just letting you know when the car is ready to hit that hit that red line just to be a little more a little more safe on that stomping on the pedal there so uh, it's a kind of a neat feature that bmw has and obviously bmw is known for the christmas tree lights right so things will pop up and down and light up and um, don't be scared just uh, know what those mean and uh, take care of them a couple of other things I want to chat with real quick is one, this right here is adjustable on this and this of course is fully electric seats whereas the E30 over there, E36 excuse me, does not have electric seats, they're all manual. Those are also called the Vader seats. I'm going to show those to you in just a second. This is also another cool feature. So you have two window buttons here at the center and as Brian will show you here in just a second, that actually opens up the rear passenger window and it just kind of slots out. It's just a fun feature. It goes back, back you know, in and out and that's all it does is not actually slide down. I just thought that's kind of a fun note uh, that's kind of very unique to this particular car. You know guys, sitting in the E36 M3 here, I absolutely love this interior. I love that everything is a physical button. Uh, I love that it's got the short shifter here. I just love the old school nature of everything. The way the steering feels, the old school analog gauges, these Vader seats are fantastic. You can adjust the lumbar here. It's, a, it's such a nice feature to have in these cars because it really takes the pressure off your lower back. And you know, for a car that's almost 25 years old, the interior's held up really well in these. You can see the, le the leather's definitely fading here on the bolstering but overall it's pretty darn good i love that they have the bmw stitch lines in the seats here in the front and the rear you also have a nice sunroof now this does have the harman kardon sound system both cars do that's a premium upgraded sound system maybe something to be mindful of if you're an audiophile but overall guys i mean same kind of thing that dan was telling you about the e46 so this is kind of an aftermarket thought for the u.s market these cup holders don't really work they're very small not really that functional so it's definitely a car that at least in germany was you know meant to be a performance car, an enthusiast car. Uh, with the uh, US, obviously these are more daily drivers, that's why they add the stuff back in, but uh, in so many ways, the cockpit is all geared towards the driver. Just feels so cool and analog, and I really think it's a big selling feature of all these cars that, frankly, so many of the new modern cars today, it just have you know, computers and screens and touch everything, and there's such a fun feeling of just clicking the buttons, you know, and seeing analog gauges and the way the car lights up and everything. It's just, just such a cool experience. You can't, you just can't replicate it. You know, it adds to the collectability of uh, these years. 
I, I think. And, and Porsche is the same way, and some of the other manufacturers are, but, but BMW just really nails it with a lot of their cockpit design uh, from the 90s. There, there's really just nothing wrong with it. I honestly wish they would just kind of go back to it and start going retro with all the new stuff. You know, real quick, guys, I wanted to share this with you. This is one of the fun things these old school BMWs used to have. They used to have the toolkit at the top of the trunk here. And here you go. So when you're looking to buy one of these, make sure that you confirm if you have all the toolkits in your M3 or not. Isn't that a neat feature, though? So, Dan, what were you just saying? Because that, that car has a spare, but this one doesn't. So how did BMW get around that? So BMW decided they, I think because of the dual exhaust, they, they had to kick, kick out the spare. Yeah. So they put this um, motorized, you plug into a um, 12 volt and it basically is compressed air and it shoots air back into the tire. But with it, it has a gel that BMW made and it shoots the gel into the tire as well and it hardens inside. Supposedly filling the hole as long as you don't have a major blowout and uh, wow. gets you at least you know, 20, 30. And that's blowout. located underneath here, huh? Yeah. That's yeah, cool. So. so no spare it came with, although it looks like you do have one in yeah, there. Yeah, they have, yeah. It's just because the other, because sometimes that gel doesn't last 20 years, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a good note. Good to have one just in case, right? Now we have cell phones. Back then, the cell phones weren't very Yeah, that's true. Cell you're cell in the middle of nowhere and you had a blowout. Yeah, yeah. you're SOL. You had to think about stuff like that. That's right. Nowadays, a lot easier. Yeah. Triple A, come get me. Run it out for just a little bit here. So that's this is a, basically a third gear pull. We're just going to go to six. I mean, you can see here, it's definitely got some power. It's enjoyable. It's a fun car. It doesn't sound that much. I will say, you know, this car stock, so we don't have any kind of exhaust or spooling or anything like some of the modern cars have but uh, you know it just feels like a fun car you can really flick it I love the way the hydraulic steering feels again it's just just nice guys and it's had the rear suspension all dialed in it's been fixed brakes feels great I mean overall I think if you're looking to buy you know a car that you know like we've been saying it's gonna hold its value have a lot of fun factor this car has really got it where it counts and it's fun, I mean, 330 horsepower, I mean, there you go, you know, coming out of fifth gear, full throttle, pulls pretty nice. Surprising, you know, it has a little bit more power than you might think being almost a 20 year old car, especially one with 147,000 miles. I mean, that in itself is pretty unbelievable in my opinion, so. Plenty of usable power, you know, you can come out of any turn, full throttle, very much like the MX-5 that I own. It's not going to oversteer unless you want it to oversteer, which we're not going to be doing that today. Yeah, I think it's a fun car, enjoyable car. I really have no negatives on the overall driving experience. And I just love the old school nature of the gauges, it's everything about it, you know. A lot of the modern cars I review, I honestly get out of them and I'm like, eh. They're fast, sure, but in the end of the day, I would rather drive something like this, guys. I just think it's more fun. Fun cars. I, I just can't believe it has 173,000 miles. Like, that is unbelievable to me. Yeah, you could have told me that this was a brand new engine. It just doesn't feel like it has anywhere near that amount of miles, and it just goes to show you how well these engines are made and the longevity that this car is able to provide, you know, you could buy it at 100,000 plus and feel confident that it's only 30% through its life cycle. And especially if you're gonna, you know, change the oil and drive it every once in a while to blow the carbon out, change the fuel pumps, change the injectors, change the spark plugs, the air filters, all the things that you're eventually gonna need to do to keep it running in tip top shape. Clutch, you know, all that, all that stuff, but Overall, I mean, guys, it's 97, 98 degrees right now. It's humid. I mean, if it's running good today, it could run in any weather. The AC's blowing cold here. You know, Dan was telling me BMW is kind of notorious for having great ACs. You know, that's something that a lot of these new EVs of the world, frankly, suck at, right? They just don't do a good job of the creature comforts because they burn the battery to the ground. This car, on the other hand, is complete opposite, right? Got old internal combustion, old school technology, and it just flipping works. Go out and buy one if you can. I don't really think that I have any negatives. I mean, yeah, it's not the fastest car in the world. It's not gonna turn any heads necessarily, but in the end of the day, 
the sum of all of its parts, the overall fun factor, if you could find one that's either all original or frankly one that's had a lot of work done like this one, I think you're going to be a happy man, I really do. Well guys, if you made it this far into the video, really appreciate you watching. Please subscribe and check out more of our content. We've got hundreds of reviews, things like this. I will tell you, this car was on Bring a Trailer recently and Dan bought it for $35,000 plus the BAT fees plus shipping, right? It's all public, I'll throw the listing on here. So I think it's a great store of value. They're amazing cars and I really hope you enjoyed our point of view drive about them. You know, we tried to let you experience them a little bit from our point of view. I love the look of these. I love the interior of them. I love the old school analog nature of them. I really love the engines. I think they're both just fun. They sound great. Remember, it's not about the performance specs sometimes. It's about the soul. It's about the feeling. I love driving my MX-5 Miata more than I love driving my GT350R, more than I love driving my Aston Martin and any of the other Teslas that I own now because of the fact of how it feels, right? It's shifting through the gears, the way the engine spools up, all of it, it's just such a fun factor. These cars give you that in spades, right? Are they going to turn heads at the car shows? Yeah, I think if you run into a BMW fanboy, absolutely. I think as you get older and older into the model years, you know, when this is 25, 30, 40, 50, I think they'll just become extremely rare and collectible, especially good, you know, examples like this that are mostly original. Who knows what the value ultimately will go, but I think if you put 30 or 40 grand into one of these things, especially a nice one, that, that's safe money. I just don't think that uh, it's ever going to go down and probably will continue to appreciate, at least with inflation. And who knows, these might well, very well be six-figure cars one day, the way this world's going as we head into an EV world, right? So that's it, I uh, appreciate you watching. That's it uh, for me, it's hot, I'm sweating, and <laughs> I think Brian and I are getting ready to die. Big shout out to him for his help with the montages, and uh, we will catch you guys on the next one. <laughs>